Ready to get pumping? Here are 10 myths about breast pumping. Myth number one, you're not really breastfeeding if you're pumping. Not everyone chooses to pump, but some moms find pumping can complement breastfeeding. Working in conjunction, pumping and nursing can help increase and maintain milk supply, help you keep breastfeeding going if you're going to be away from your baby, or just give your partner a turn at feeding the baby. Myth number two, pumping hurts. It might be a sensation you have to get used to, but it shouldn't hurt. If it does, you may need to play with suction strength. Make sure the breast shields are the right size for you and centered to your nipples. Myth number three, breast pumps can be shared. Although it's tempting to share with a new mom friend, breast pumps are considered single-user medical devices by Health Canada and the FDA. Doing so can expose you to risks of cross-contamination and the pump's motor may not perform like new. Myth number four, your milk supply can't be improved. Pumping between feeds is a great way to increase your milk supply. Your body actually makes more milk if it is demanded to do so by either a baby or a pump. Myth number five, breast milk from a bottle means my baby will refuse the breast. Ideally, before introducing a bottle, breastfeeding should be firmly established. And once nursing is going well, many babies can easily switch between breast and bottle. Myth number six, going back to work means an end to breastfeeding. The WHO recommends exclusive breastfeeding or breast milk feeding for the first six months. Then, continued breastfeeding is recommended to 24 months and beyond. With support from your workplace, pumping can help you maintain your milk supply so you can keep breastfeeding while also providing expressed breast milk to your baby. Myth number seven, your baby doesn't get enough antibodies from expressed breast milk. Research suggests that the contact you have with your babe during breastfeeding enables you to make milk with custom immunological components to boost baby's immunity. But even if you're not breastfeeding, skin to skin, cuddling, kissing and hugging, living in the same environment and breathing the same air can also help your body respond to baby's needs. Myth number eight, stored milk isn't as healthy as fresh milk. While there is a bit of a difference, you can minimize loss of nutrition by making sure milk is stored according to guidelines, refrigerated in sterilized glass or BPA-free bottles, and thawed before feeding it to your baby. Just remember to never reheat, refreeze, or microwave that liquid gold. Myth number nine, you won't bond with your baby if you're not nursing. Not all women are able to exclusively breastfeed or breastfeed at all. But cuddling, bath time, and other types of skin-to-skin -skin contact create the feel-good hormone oxytocin that will help strengthen that connection between you and your babe. Myth number 10, your body knows what to do to get milk production going. While this may be true to a certain degree since there is a small amount of colostrum available for your baby the first few days after birth, you need to let your body know that it needs to get going on milk production. You can do this by putting your newborn on your breast within the first three hours post-birth and every two to three hours after that for the first week or two. This will turn the switch on in the little milk factories in your breasts to initiate your milk supply, setting you up for long-term breastfeeding success.